Okay, so in the last video, we went over the unit table and how to use it once you've calculated a z-score. In this video, we're going to go over how to use the z-table in a slightly different way when doing hypothesis testing and using the z-score in hypothesis testing specifically. So let's, in the last video, we had a z-score of 0.60, so we'll go with that z-score again. So how to use the z-table in a different way is you use it when you want to find your critical value, and the critical value is the z-score cutoff point for when to reject the null hypothesis and when to fail the fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the way you find the critical value is based on your alpha level. And the alpha level represents a probability, which is what the z-table is, the proportion by proportion and tail. So we'll say we have an alpha level of 0.05, which is the most common. And since this represents a probability of below 50%, we're going to use the proportion tail. So first, we want to find 0.05 as in, in the proportion and tail to find a corresponding z value. So if we look, we have 0.0548 here and 0.0446 here. So what we could do is go between those two z-scores that correspond point of 1.6, 1.7, and use 1.65. So 1.65 is our critical value, which defines our critical region. So if we draw our normal curve again, and we have 1.65 z-score, it's our critical value. So everything to the right of that is considered our critical region. And in the critical region is when you reject the null hypothesis. And the critical region defines thus all of the z-scores that are above 1.65. So as you can see, our z-score that we have here of 0 0.060 is less than our critical value of 1.65. So we about there would be our um, z-score that we calculated, the 0 0.60. And since it is not in the critical region, that means we fail to reject the null hypothesis that we have stated for whatever the problem may be. Say instead we have a z-score of 1.75, pretend that's a 5. Since 1.75 is greater than 1.65, it is in our critical region over here, and that means we reject the null hypothesis. So that's how to decide to fail to reject or reject the null hypothesis based on the unit table of z-scores. Another way to determine whether to reject, reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis is if um, you can't do this way by hand, but there are many different statistical programs on computers that you can use and you put in all the data and it computes a whole bunch of values and one value that you'll see extremely often is called the p-value. Our p-value is kind of similar to our alpha value and our critical value. The p-value is determine it's kind of like a cutoff point like the critical value and it's like the alpha value because it's the same 
number as the alpha level. So say our alpha level is 0.05 in this case, that means our p-value is 0.05. And for any scores that are any p-value that you compute that is below 0.05, you will reject the null hypothesis and any number above the 0.05 mark you will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the p-value you will see on most hypothesis testings.